And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're going to be colonizing this planet, the oil planet. Well, namely the Dreco planet. We want to get those Drecos and bring them back home. Uh, someone pointed out, actually, in the comments, that if I look all the way over here, there's another area I could go down. Uh, this one here. I could just drill straight down through here, and that should allow me to get in. I can see igneous rock here and here. Oh, and there's some phosphorite, so we should be able to dig through there, but... Ooh, and it's more igneous. I don't know what's beyond that. Though, in theory, we could find out what's on that side. I doubt it'll be better than this side, but uh, I think we'll finish off what we're doing here, and then we'll send the robot over to have a look. Namely because it's going to be a while before reinforcements arrive. It's going to take... But three cycles to get home and three cycles to get back. So we've got six cycles to kill. Oh, and at the same time, over on the Ikeon asteroid or whatever it's called, the uh, the rather smelly one, our, uh, our little robot here is, is working working to make a new livable area for someone to come eventually show up in. Fortunately, as someone else pointed out, I, I released Slime Lung. There's now Slime Lung everywhere. There's there's no getting rid of that. That's, uh, that's here to stay. So, um, yeah, we'll just have to live with that somehow. And finally, on the the home front, we're putting in another ranch, namely because we're going to want to move the Drecos in there. Well, we're going to have to make a special ranch for the Drecos, but they can go here temporarily until we've expanded their numbers. Or I'll find some other use for it. And where were we? Ah, yes, oxygen. That's going to become a problem. We have 13 duplicates, but we're only providing enough oxygen for 10. So it's time we put in another electrolyzer setup. I'm thinking we'll throw it in down here, right on top of this coal biome to make sure it's nice and chilly oxygen. It should help counteract the oxygen over here, which is starting to get... A little bit warmer. Actually, it's 20 degrees. That's fine for now. But second one in here, we should do this while we've got the time. This is going to take a little while. And while we're at it, this place over here, I believe, yep, the robots made it all the way over to this side. Um, we'll head down this direction. Ooh, steam vent. That means there's a water source on this planet. It means we can make a, a, more than, a more than temporary colony. Let's see if we can't dig down as deep as we can get. While I was ham-fistedly digging this down, I just realized something. There's oxygen down here. This is a far better location to settle than over here. Over here has no oxygen. We'd, we'd be struggling to get it set up. This just has enough oxygen that it should be able to keep a duplicate alive at least for about a cycle or so. This saves us so much hassle. Um, so we'll dig down here. We'll grab out some of that... What was it? That iron ore right there? And then we'll use that iron ore to make a door up top. We don't want to let any of that oxygen escape. That oxygen is precious. Uh... Oh, one second. Cancel that. We don't let any of that hydrogen contaminate anything. You should still be able to get through there. Yeah, perfect. But we'll let that hydrogen and uh, chlorine just stay there, not bothering us. And while all that's going on, we should probably finish off our electrolyzer setup over here. This should be pretty handy to make. Oh, I should probably clear it. Mm. You see, we put the water sieve and the carbon skimmer up there, and they basically have not been in carbon dioxide for so long that the water in the pipes froze. Yep. But on the bright side, we're going to use that chill net to kill, cool down our oxygen, so it should be fine. This might take a little while to build, but it'll be it'll be grand. Plus, we're going to have the chilliest oxygen you could ever hope for. Ooh, that reminds me, we should find a slightly warmer place to put our Drekos. Drekos prefer a little bit of warmth, so I say we put the Drekos over this side. Oh, and uh, this is uh, interesting. With all of the fish we have been making, and we have been making a lot of fish. Guess how many animals there are running around in this area? 273. Yes, this area right here has 273 animal or critters in it. That's actually stifled the poke shells. The poke shells are overcrowded. Yep, they're overcrowded so they can't reproduce because there's too many fish. The fish, however, are... Oh, they finally become overcrowded as well, have they? Their re nope, their reproduction is still at 7% of the cycle. That means each one of these fish is dropping an egg before it dies, meaning they infinitely keep reproducing themselves. That's, uh... It's probably not good. Well, um... Yeah, so we're going to try and rope up all the poke shells and I think put them over here. Yeah, we'll we'll move all those critters over there. We'll also move any other wild critters like these hatches that we got. We'll dump them all over there as well. And I think the hatches that hatch down here, the wild ones, they're all dead. They froze to death. Probably should have anticipated that. Oops. The construction here is taking a little bit of time, namely because, well, all of the chlorine and carbon dioxide and just the general nastiness down here is being problematic. So we're going to do a quick filtration program and get some oxygen down here so our duplicates aren't constantly running through all of this chlorine cloud. Here we go. That should help sort things out a little bit faster. That will take out all the carbon dioxide and any chlorine here. Carbon dioxide will get filtered into one tank. The uh, chlorine will get filtered into the second tank. If that tank fills, well, I suppose we'll just have to start constructing more tanks. Plus, we could do ourselves a quick CO2 rocket if we get enough uh, gas stored up. And everyone else is still going to have to come down here and fix this place up. I know you're holding your breaths. Sorry, guys. Our little rover over here is doing just 
legendary work right now. Now, I've realized that there's water here, but not only that, there's a gap in this abyssalite, and we're able to just keep going straight down, and there's oxalite down here and everything. We, we, we can get into a sandstone biome. Like, we couldn't get into either of these, but this one's broken up because of the, uh, the cool steam vent. Even if there was no gap here, we could go around the top and come back in this direction. It just... Mmm. Mmm. Excellent. Big thanks to Zanland for spotting that. I did not notice that at all. That is excellent. Uh, ooh, look. Spork sporkids. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's almost no carbon dioxide in there and they're, they're stuck in oil. It's fine, fine. We can dig down here. How deep does this go and how much oxalate is in there? That's 180 kilos there. 65 kilos there. And there's a whole bunch of... Oh, we can grow meal wood, everything. This is perfect. This will make an excellent little location for a base. Um, hmm realize something. We'll make that out of igneous rock, but then the rest of it can be made out of sandstone because it's a locally available material. And then we can just dig straight down. Wait, well, why don't you let me go down? Perfect. We'll go straight down through here and we'll see exactly what's available. Ooh, we're going to have to make a little base in here and everything. While our robot is slowly expanding our future colony, uh, our home base is slowly but surely building up a, a little a second electrolyzer system. It's going to be, well, identical to this one. There's no real changes. Oh, and I started including the save game files. I'd for, I hadn't been including those. I hadn't even been thinking, but there's save game files now attached to all of these videos going back. So if you ever do want to pick up the save game at any point and see what's going on, you can. Or just open it up so you can see what, what how I build things. Uh, we have 0 0.3 cycles before that gets home. Perfect. Well, not quite. We're, we're not finished yet, but we will be so shortly. Oh, that was the sound of a gate activation. Let's see what we got. After thinking about this long and hard, I think I am going to take another rocketry pilot. We're going to be building a second rocket soon, so... Say hello to Hubert E. McCoskey. And with this rocketry bonus, they'll be getting a plus 23% to their rocketry speed. Which is good, because our, our rockets kind of suck a lot. And let me uh, sign them out some uh, quick details, and at the same time, we are going to sweep this out before we close it up. We didn't have time to sweep this one out when we were uh, making it, but this one we can at least clean it up before we make a mess of the place. As our slow but steady attempt to get up a second electrolyzer continues, our steam rocket has returned. A little bit of a scalding for our exiting duplicant, but that's fine. Problem though is... Oh, it's not a great interior to the rocket here. If you look at the gas overlays, there's a lot of carbon dioxide in there. It got a little bit... Overloaded. I'm thinking we just scrap this thing. As in, we deconstruct it, start from scratch, build a whole new spacefarer module. That thing has to go. So I think at the same time, this rover module can also go. We can deconstruct that. We're not going to need it. Also, that other rover module. No more rovers, I'm thinking. However, before we open the doors to let everyone back out, we're going to wait until it stops being so hot out here. It's like 100 degrees. 124. We'll wait until some of that steam dissipates. Uh, has the water down here looking? Yeah, that's... That's pretty toasty. You know what? We'll only let them out this top door, which is also 100 degrees. Okay, then. Um, yeah, that's a problem. Ooh, maybe we drop that water out. You know what? Open that door, let the water out. We're going to have to find some way to chill this area down. I'm thinking we got some polluted water down here. We're going to have to run it through. Without Atmos suits, this stuff is just a nightmare to deal with. We had to make some changes here to our airlock system, uh, namely to include a bit of a vacuum so that, you know, people could get in and out without getting scalded so much. It wasn't a complete success, but, you know, we've only ended up with a few people in hospital and we're putting down a few extra beds. But we should be able to hopefully get this working. Okay, just re remove that module for the love of God and, and remove that one as well. Uh, that was... It's messy and painful, but we'll get another rocket up. And once we do, we'll come back with Drekos and be actually able to produce reed fibre so we can use Atmos suits next time around. Uh, how is our oxygen production facility looking? It is all clear except for the brine. I think we'll leave the brine in there. Uh, actually, how much is there? Mm, okay, maybe we should find a place to put that brine. Uh, there looks like a nice place. Soon we'll have this up and running and we can we, we can be confident that we have enough oxygen not to starve. How's the oxygen levels looking down here? We're down to a kilo of pressure. And how's our medical beds looking? Uh, not too bad. Uh, that was, uh... Oh, wow. Well, I kind of feel bad about all of that. I'll make it up to you later on, but it's just, uh... We needed to do some changes to this. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're actually going to dismantle this whole rocket thing and move it up to about here. That way we can work in a vacuum and we can avoid this uh, inconveniences in future. Though, yeah, we're going to have to make some changes, aren't we? Mm. Yep, no, I'll worry about that in a minute. Oxygen first, then our rocket second. At the same time, over on the oil planet, we are currently trying to consolidate all the water in this section and then we're going to, well, cut this place apart. Oh, let me take out that sand there as well. Uh, once we've cut this place apart, I think the robot will probably be out of power. What are they into? 34 kilojoules at 180. 
Uh, so maybe a couple of days left. And over here, this rover has shut down, which is kind of a pity. And what is that fish still doing there? Just, just fall, fall. No, I think they've been there for ages. Right, but they managed to get up beds. Uh, they've also got up a dining hall. In fact, let's see. Yep, so they got a mess hall. They didn't get to finish the bedrooms, but that's okay. And the toilets are almost ready. All we have to do is fly a dupe over here and stick them in here. They should be good to go. They will have to produce the deodorizers and things. Uh, what you should note about the rovers is they can only produce things of research tech level one. So, for example, they can produce the, the hamster wheels because the hamster wheels, they're in normal power generation. They could put it down a supercomputer if you wanted. Uh, water coolers, things like that. But anything that's level two, so say go under gases, uh, deodorizers. Deodorizers require advanced tech, advanced research, so they can't produce those. They can only produce stuff in the first two levels of tech. Anything like that they can build. Anything above that, they can't. Just a, a good thing to know if you're trying to plan out your building for them. Anyway, back here, where were we? Is that actually swept out, finally? Hey, uh, guys, just, just get the last of it. There's only one piece left, and then we can turn this sucker on. Water-wise, uh, we're going to hook that up there. And gas-wise, I'm thinking... We deconstruct you. Before we can turn this on, we have to put in all the gas piping. Uh, that's going to be a little bit complicated. I should probably go over the gas piping I use. Uh, when it comes down to these things, I always use bridges. Now, it used to be in the previous versions. I don't know if they've patched this out, actually. I'm still using... I'm still sort of working on the old-school idea of it. You have to put in bridges first before you break off a line for a gas vent. So you'll see here, every time I've put in a gas vent, it's off of uh, the white the white output of a bridge. Now, you don't have to do it off the white output, but I like to do it that way. But you have to do it off the output of a bridge. If we try and just break things off, like, say, oh, say that you have a pipe going on like this, and you decide to put in an oxygen vent right on top of it, like, oh, that. What will happen is the gas will come up, and it'll keep blocking here as it tries to escape the gas vent. It used to get half flow. So we stopped using those and we started using bridges to break everything off. Now, I don't know if that matters anymore, but it has resulted in this sort of uh, weird thing where I always break them off that way, which means my gas is going to prioritize going all the way up here until it gets to this end and then it breaks off here. So this is a prioritized gas vent. This means this one will always get the gas first. Then we have to go back to here to find the secondary gas vent. You see that one's blocking up as well. And then it, it goes down to here breaks off this section, and this is, actually, no, it's not even that one. It will keep going across here, and the next prioritized gas vent is on the other planet over here, which means this place is fully pressurized everywhere because it's still such high priority. And then, of course, as you go further back down along the line, say, where's the next gas vent? Oh, it's, oh, it actually gets all the way back here. Yeah, that one's not pressurized at all, namely because all of the gas has been consumed up this, this part up here, which is why it's not overflowing. In fact, this here is the next one from uh, the other planet. So you'll notice this, the gas pressure here is only at about 1.3 kilos. We are definitely under pressure. So this down here, we're going to finish off all of these uh, gas pipes. And once these gas pipes are done, we can plug in this new electrolyzer and that should sort out the problem. And then I'm thinking, ooh, we're going to put in a little door here. I'm thinking a pneumatic door. We're going to drop all the carbon dioxide down here. Those uh, betas will happily eat all our carbon dioxide. And we've got most of the chlorine already consumed. Yeah, actually... Let's uh, could take a little bit more of that and stick it into storage tanks. That chlorine will come in handy later when we want to do some uh, food cleaning up. All right, let's uh, let's skip it forward a bit until all the gas pipes are in place. I think we're just about ready to rock here. We've got all of the gas piping done up. We just have to activate this and let it stabilize a bit. But first, we should probably clean it out. The whole thing is full of gunk. Uh, first up, though, let's plug that into the main grid just for a second. In fact... Let's make sure we can disconnect that once the battery's full. We're going to get a full battery to get it started. It might not get it started the whole way, but I'm I'm okay with that. We're going to end up with a little bit of gunk in the, uh, the hydrogen engine. Yeah, perfect. And while you're there, just deconstruct that. Perfect. That was a handy way to power things up. For our next step, we will just make sure if the gas pressure is above... Actually, the gas pressure is below that... Those two should activate. That should cause them to suck out all of the gases that are in there. And dump those over here, where they'll go get filtered, and the carbon dioxide will store, the chlorine will store, and the oxygen will just vent out. And then once this whole thing is a complete vacuum, we'll plug in the water, which should take two seconds. Which, look at that beauty, it's all oxygen. I didn't actually take out all the gases, that just takes too much time and effort. But now we can bridge in some water. Well, overflow vents some water, and I think I accidentally changed whatever that was made out of. And done. 
So the water's going to come down here. These pipes are made of granite, so they'll radiate a little bit of chill in here. We're not, we could use radiant gas pipes, but at the, or radiant liquid pipes, pipes, but at the moment, look at it, it's minus 19 down here. Uh, there's, there's no point. It, using radiant pipes down here, we risk freezing the water or just actually dumping more heat in here than we need to. So that's going to dump in the water right there. Oh, we can turn off that gas pump for now. How's the, how's the gas pressure down here looking? Yeah, we've managed to suck out most of the carbon dioxide and chlorine, but it seems to be spreading, but that's because the oxygen pressure is dropping. Uh, water has been delivered. Electrolyzers are going to start outputting. We're going to wait until they've uh, max pressured. Once they've max pressured, then we'll turn the system on. In fact, where is that going? That uh, oh, We're going to overflow some of the hydrogen. We're going to get some element damage on that, but I'm kind of okay with that. And that can actually plug in there, and we can deconstruct that there. We no longer are going to be filtering any of the gunk from down here. I was going to think of a way to keep this active, but I think a better bet is to let the betas destroy all the carbon dioxide. Yeah, we'll we'll pump out the chlorine a different way. We'll worry about that in a minute, once everything over here is overpressurized. And I think we're just about there. Uh, so this is above 450. Uh, yep, we will copy your settings and put them over there. This is for 750, but we're not going to activate that just, just yet. We're going to let a little bit more collect. And there we go. Hey, does, guys, d does someone want to actually build that gas pipe there so we can get this running? Come on, hurry up. But right, now we're going to turn on the upper gas pump to start pulling out the hydrogen. Of course, there's, it's going to be a messy gunk of different gases. It's going to cause element damage. And while we're at it, actually, we are going to deconnect... De de at de deconstruct. Disconnect it from the main power grid. We don't want that causing any problems. Now, while all of this is going on, our build teams are not being lazy. They are building a giant sort of access corridor up here. This is going to be an oxygenated corridor so that we can get up to the top here, so that we can build our steam rockets in the vacuum of space. It will make breathing a little bit more difficult until we get it finished, but it's not the worst. It's uh, just a useful way of making sure that we don't scald our dupes all the time. Now, how are we looking down here? You almost stabilized. Yeah, there's a, uh, there's some oxygen left back here, but once that oxygen is gone, come on, a little bit more. Done. All right. We're going to have a bunch of element damage here in our hydrogen generator, but that is A-OK. -okay. You, you should be set to uh, 95, say 80 is good. Don't, oh, God damn it! don't run out of power. Grab some more hydrogen. Come on. Yeah, it should be okay. We'll keep an eye on it, but that should start pressurizing our auction. And oh my god, I missed the blueprint. Um, let me see. What do we got here? We have a small bladdered cook. We have a narcoleptic jogger. And then we have an unpracticed artist who does digging on the side. No, uh, we'll just take the curative tablets. Thank you very much. Jesus, you're useless. All right, uh, oxygen is now flowing. Pressure down here was at 600 grams. That should slowly start rising now. It'll take a bit of time to backfill everything because of the way we have things set up. But yeah, you can see the gas pinch, ah, gas vents starting to overpressurize everywhere. That's looking an awful lot healthier. All right, and what was I going to do? Oh yes, that reminds me. I was going to get that pip. Where are they? You. That was a wild pip. We want to wrangle you up and we want to dump you over here. Uh, I'm thinking about phasing out these pips. We don't really need them anymore. So, yeah, there's there's going to be some shooting going on in there in a minute. But keeping a pip or two alive for later might be handy. Well, with our oxygen requirements sorted, we're now up to a solid... Okay, it's, it's not quite pressurized everywhere, but the oxygen is flowing at speed. And everywhere that should be getting pressurized is... And any backflow is well, ending up where it needs to go. We need to concentrate on getting our rockets up and running. Steel-wise, we're doing quite good, but I'm deconstructing this entire rocket. Like, everything in it, gotta go. We want to remove that, remove that, uh, also remove that, and remove that. I'm going to leave the steam engine to last. I'm pretty sure that's going to pop out 150 kilos of steam, which I'd rather not deal with just yet. Then we can finish off our little uh, mobility access tunnel, I think we called them. Yep, yep, it released the steam all right. Uh, we might give that a second before we get rid of the rocket platform. We're going to just deconstruct this rocket platform and move it up here somewhere. That way we've got it all in the vacuum of space and we don't have to worry about the steam accumulating. Uh, when we first put it in, we were in a rush. Now we're, okay, still in a rush, but I'm sick of getting everyone getting scolded. This should hopefully make things easier. While our new rocket setup goes ahead, there is a couple of other things we need to take care of. Namely, food. We're, we've got too much of it coming in now. 
You've got 100 kilos in there and 100 kilos in there, and we have to decide what to keep and what to trash. I'm thinking the gristleberry's got to go. Uh, everything else we can keep. We're just bringing in enough barbecue and cooked fish to keep us going for eternity, from what I can see. So, bristleberry, uh, or gristleberry, I'm afraid you're going straight to the compost. Uh, any more of you in here? There we go. That's a whole bunch of gristleberry that'll get composted. Well, eventually. It'll probably just go off and then it'll turn into rot pile, at which point it'll get taken to the storage bin. Just right now, there's we, we don't have enough compost to take care of all of the polluted dirt that's running around, and I don't really like running polluted dirt. As you can see, all the pickled meal has been phased out ages ago already. We didn't eat that. We just trashed it. Anyway, let's get our, uh, our new rocket silo up and running. It's going to be awkward, but I figure what we can do here is... Actually, we can deconstruct these buildings all the way along there. That should allow better oxygen flow. Getting all of this done, cleaned out and moved was a little bit, uh, well, it was a little bit expensive. We did take a few minor injuries, but that's okay. We're going to just give everyone a quick heal up to, to stop them being stressed or anything like that. And then we're going to finish off our rocket. Which, it's like a cycle 173. We're never getting all the achievements by cycle 365, especially with the mutations. We'll be lucky if we get them in a thousand cycles. Uh, well, we'll see what we can do. At the same time, over on our oil planet, yep, the rover has shut down. But they did manage to get a few rooms up and running. They got ourselves a mess hall, a barracks, and a latrine. So, you know, not all bad. They didn't get to finish off their work, though. We had plenty of work assigned out for them. It's just their battery gave out. Uh, maybe next time we'll send two. Yeah, but that means that we just need to get our rocket up and running and we can go colonize those places. Over on our first teleporter planet, or the teleporter planet, we're actually not doing too bad. We've still got 11 tons of copper that this dupe is supposed to be going. What are you doing? You are... Oh, bring, sending us back the sleet wheat. This is actually where we get all our sleet wheat from. That goes back to here, and that all gets turned into berry sludge, of which we have 136,000 calories, which is going to be great for our space travel. Now all we have to do is fill up the bottom of that gas tank. Yep, there we go. We're just pumping all of the steam out of here, of which we have actually way too much. We might dump some of that into the background of space. Now to stop this pipe breaking when we're done with it, what I've done is I always stick in this uh, gas vent. So once this overflows, we make sure that this, uh, well, it all flows off into the v vacuum of space and we don't have to worry about it. That should actually be fairly quick. Oh, and we've got a space fire module done. That means we can see about getting, where is it, trailblazers. Hmm. Now, there's two things I was looking at. We could grab two trailblazers and send them down, and we could make them out of copper. It's, it, I used to think you could only make these out of raw ores. Maybe they patched it, or maybe I'm just misremembering things. I thought you had to make these out of steel, but now we can just make them out of copper if we want. Uh, at the same time, we could, use t we could use two of these, and that would give us enough resources to make one rocket pad when we land. You can scrap those for to make rocket pads. Or where is it? There's another thing you can build here. An orbital cargo module delivers cargo to the surface of planetoids that do not yet have a pro rocket platform. Okay, we could throw one of those down, and that thing could actually drop the resources off for us. Though, where they land, mm, who knows? Uh, so, you know what? We'll build one of these, and we'll do some playing around. We'll try the, we'll try using one trailblazer module, and we'll use the cargo orbital cargo module dropper, because I've never used one of those before. So, on top of all of this, we are also going to want to stick... Where is it? A battery? We're going to definitely need one of those. Then we're also going to want to put on a couple of solar panels. Actually, three of those would be good. And that should give us all the basics. Eh, one there, one there. Eh, done. You'll get a little bit irradiated, guys, but you'll be fine. Then we just have to figure out what we want to stick in here. This can hold six tons. Perfect. We can send over more than enough resources for what we need. The whole idea behind this weird-looking tunnel is just to stop heat transfer. The steam engine will heat this up horribly, but it shouldn't be able to pass through the vacuum of space. There'll be no gas to transfer it, unlike down here where we're getting that problem. Like, a little bit will go through, but hopefully not too much. And as well as that, we stuck in a bunch of gas piping to make sure that our dupes had nearby oxygen supply. So this should mean their time outside should be much shorter. Now, I did mess up a little bit up here. This will get hot, which will transfer the heat to there, which will be a problem, but it's okay. We, we can make a few minor modifications here. Oh, also, uh, there's no difference between insulated tiles and regular tiles for blocking radiation. While they're doing those quick modifications there, we do want to make one change, and that is I need to send a dupe back over to the other uh, planet to send back more copper. We're actually running out of copper ore to feed to the hatches over here, which, you know, we need for the achievement. We're going to send over Halo Davis here. They were meant to be a mechatronics engineer, but they had enough skill points, and we can give them digging and improved carrying. That means we can send them over here, Halo can hop in, we'll send you over, quick zippity-split. Perfect. 
Then we'll just change their uh, priorities. Now, Alex here, their only purpose so far has been to, well, to cook and clean and do a bunch of other stuff, but that has not been helping out so much in terms of the actual hauling of copper. So Halo's job is going to be twofold. One, to haul all the copper over here, and two, we're actually going to want them to dig up all the rest of the copper. There's probably a bunch of other, co yeah, there's copper around here that we haven't dug out yet. So I'm thinking we can get more than nine tons of the remaining copper back home. With the rocket complete, our next step is to actually configure it, which... Yeah, all we've done here so far is we've stuck in an oxygen diffuser and deleted everything. Now we have to figure out how we can send three duplicates across. You see, we need three for what we have in mind. We need one to fly the rocket, and then we need one to be a rancher. So we can ranch up some Drekos and bring those Drekos back home with us so we can ranch them at home. And then we need a third duplicate to stay behind here and actually dig this place out. They're going to want to stay here for a bit, excavate out all the way around here, and basically gain access to all of the iron ore, algae. Well, they're going to need the algae to survive, but they're also going to want to get the iron ore because we want that iron ore back home. That's a lot of iron ore, and we could turn that into a lot of steel, especially over there. And there's copper and everything. We can't really tackle the oil biome, though. This stuff is 80 degrees. We go in there, we get scalded. So that's not really an option. However, there is the possibility of doing a little sneaky say, thing down here. We could maybe put in a liquid pump right about there and then dig out those two tiles to get the oil out. The oil will probably eventually damage the liquid pump, but we should be able to get enough oil out of it to make some plastic, and from there we can see where we go. It depends how desperate we are for plastic at the time. So yes, three people need to be able to fit in this, but only two will be returning back. So three enter, two leave. So this monstrosity is what I'm going with. We still don't have access to plastic, so we're stuck with an outhouse. Um, we're going to need the rocket control station there, and we're going to put an oxygen diffuser up there. We're still going to end up with CO2 collecting at the bottom, and whoever's in that bottom bed is not going to like it. But that's okay, because on the way back we'll have one less person, so there'll be no one sleeping in CO2 when we're on the way back. While all of this is going on, though, we're need going to need to get our hands on some oxygen masks. We don't definitively need them, but it would be a good idea. So, where is those oxygen mask stations? We are going to need a crafting table to make the oxygen masks, and then we're going to need a couple of oxygen mask docks, docks to fill them up. We're, we're basically going to manually use these. There's going to be no fancy stuff going on here. Uh, oh, and that reminds me. We're going to need to splinter off some oxygen for that. So you can go like that. And that way we can fill those up. There we go. Oxygen masks can fill up. Well, the oxygen mask docks. Then all we have to do is craft a few of them. All right, what do we got? We got... Ooh, I think we're going with copper ore. We've definitely got more coming back from the other side. So ooh, we'll go with four. Just in case we need them, we'll make four oxygen masks. Then we'll stick them in the docks, and then when they're full of oxygen, we can start manually assigning them out to people. How's everyone doing in here? What it really annoys me is every time they go to into the ship, they have to do that little animation about how annoyed they are by the radiation. But it's fine. We'll soon be finished. There were some mentions in the comments that I don't need a hand sanitizer because of the radiation, but I don't want to risk it on this run. So I'm still going to put in a hand sanitizer for now. But if we check this out, what have we got here? Uh, oh. That reminds me, we can deconstruct these two. Uh, get rid of the power wires as well. And we can throw down a few mess tables, and those mess tables will mean this place should be... a mess hall. Wait. Damn it, we need a recreational building, don't we? Yeah, furniture, give me a water cooler. Uh, actually, wait, no. Give me a party line. Hell yeah, in fact, we're even going to plug that in. Why not? We're, we're, we're going we're gonna to splurge for these guys. They're on a mission. Okay, that should sort us out on that front. The only thing we're missing now is a pilot and two uh, experimental dupes who are ready to be shot into space. We're going to have to give them a quick bit of a skill scrub, though. We can't have them having morale problems when they're in the middle of space. That would lead to unfortunate consequences. So, a couple of quick skill scrubbers, and then we have to pick out our, uh, our assignees. I'm thinking Brendan's going to be our uh, digger slash builder on the other side. They've got good construction and excavation, even when they're scrubbed. And then for our pilot, it's definitely going to be Hubert there. They've got the uh, the bonus for rocketry, so they're going to have a piloting skill of 9. Which, yep, that, that's a fair chunk. Actually, wait, is it going to be more than 9? Ah, they've actually got a, pi a base piloting skill of 9, and they're about to get an extra 2 points, which will put them far ahead of our other pilot, Tugboat. Tugboat there has a, a pilotry skill of 6, but 2 of those is coming from that actual skill point there, so they really only have 4. So I think we'll send Hubert over. Then we're still going to need someone to be the rancher, and I'm thinking, I think we might just send Tugboat over. They've got two spare points, and we can just put that in to improve farming and critter ranching, and done. That'll only put them up to seven points, which they should totally be able to support. So we don't even need to scrub those. So we just need to scrub Brendan, and I think we're good. Yeah, 
scrub Brendan and we can send him off. In fact, we can cancel the building that. All right, Brendan, time to get in here and have a spotless mind. We're also going to get these masks, these oxygen masks delivered up here. Each one of these, I have been informed, can hold enough oxygen to keep a dupe supplied for half a day. However, it doesn't store up their CO2, so you can't really use them very well in a, if you're trying to make some sort of vacuum thing involving volcanoes. But it does mean that they can hang around in space with these on for half a day and not actually die. Which is going to be very useful for us with, with what we have planned. Ah, Brendan, how you doing in there? Your face looks like... Yeah, you're enjoying that so much. All right, once these two gas masks are fill up, we'll knock them out and we'll throw in two more. You can actually just undock them, drop them on the ground. Though, oh, yeah, we might want to move those inside the ship once we're done. We swept the first two oxygen masks into the ship, so they should be safe in there. Or is it? Yeah, we got them in here. They only hold 20 kilos a piece, though. That means they only last for a third of a day. I don't know if that's a difficulty setting or just uh, I was misinformed. Oh, well, uh, so we get 20 kilos of oxygen per duplicate so long as they've got these things on. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is just going to be really fun. Are they full? Yeah, well, it's time for you guys to get also swept in. <laughs> as well as that, these things don't have uh, very good durability. They won't last very long before they're actually destroyed, so I'm not sure you can even get many charges out of these if you did bring oxygen. But let's load them up, and then let's decide what we're putting on this ship. I'm thinking copper ore. Yeah, I think we can put on about 800 kilos of copper ore in here. That's 800 kilos of copper, not copper ore, copper. We're going to use that to make a rocket platform on the other end. It takes 800 kilos of the stuff. Now, we will get about 400 kilos of copper out of this already, so we shouldn't need it all, but we have no idea where those orbital cargo modules are going to land. It's going to be interesting. We might have to run across the surface of the planet, but uh, whatever. We'll sort something out. I think we are fully stocked up. We have exactly four oxygen masks in there. All of our algae, which is seven tons of it. Uh, two tons of dirt to refill the toilet. And then we've got 97 rad pills. I was going to hold out for 100, but nah. 40 kilos of berry sludge, which gives us, was it 160,000 calories? Uh, one second, if we take that off grounded. There we go. Yeah, 160,000 calories of berry sludge. I think that should be enough to get everyone there and back. Now all we have to do is line up the crew and tell them to get on board. And hey, crew. Oh, before we send Brendan in, actually, we might want to skill these people up. It's just when they get to the other side, I'm worried they might want to go to the gate. And that gate is in a very uncomfortable place. I built the gate over here when, yeah, that was a stupid idea, but the gate's there and we can't deconstruct that now, so it's stuck there. And if they want to upgrade their skills over here, they might try running over to this section despite the locked door. So let's just skill them up now while we've got them at home and beside a convenient gate. I'm thinking the only thing Brendan really needs is improved carrying and digging and... Yeah, we'll leave out super hard digging. They don't need diamond and obsidian for a while. They'll be okay with that. Uh, Hubert is going to be just rocket piloting and that's all they can do anyway. And Tugboat will just give them... Yeah, level one critter ranching. Done. So they're going to need seven morale. They're just going to need, what... <laughs> Two morale, that's perfect, and Brendan only requires six. I think that works out pretty much okay. And let's load him up and fire him into space. The crew are currently on the way. One rancher, one builder, one pilot. Yeah, man. Well, that reminds me, I should make sure our secondary pilot doesn't have any access to the pilotry controls. Don't want them slowing this thing down. Yeah, come on, hop in. Perfect. Welcome to your new home. The crew are all aboard. Checklist is complete. Everyone is allowed access to all of the facilities. Consumables. Oh, god damn it. I just realized I never let that tile complete. So that entire side is going to be a little bit more radiated than the rest. You know what? It's 10 more rads. I'm okay with it. I am not deconstructing that and replacing it. You can all eat as much berry sludge and rad pills as your hearts desire. Okay, I think we're sorted. Time to launch them on their way and see if the heat actually transfers through correctly this time. We're trying to make sure that th this place doesn't turn into an inferno so that when our when this rocket comes back we can actually use it again uh begin your launch sequence and there we go temperature wise it's going to be pretty toasty while it takes off that's okay perfect that vacuum is saving our butts nice and then all of the steam dissipates into the background of space and everything is hunky-dory. Beautiful. Star map style, how long that's going to take? 1.1 cycles? Oh, wait. Wrong direction. I should be going over here. Sh really should have figured that out. Guys, that direction. Right. My bad. 3.2 cycles to get to destination. That's not so bad. 
We'll be fine. Now all we gotta do is build ourselves some Jericho farms while we're waiting. I'm thinking we can put them in right here. But I'm of course over time. Also, the uh, the Paddy's Day painkillers I've been taking have worn off, and I need to get my hands on a bacon cheese toasty right about now, and then maybe a bit of a bit of a nap, or or maybe a little bit of a hair of the dog that bit me. God, Paddy's Day is just the best time of year, is it not? Anyway, I am going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck.